good afternoon so uh, in the cryptography so far what we have covered are the classical ciphers a modern block cipher we discussed the data encryption standard right so we have already covered des right what is the size of the block in des plain text block 64 bit right so we have noted that it is the 64 bit plain text block then what is the size of the key it is also 64 bit key but which in turn actually we are ideally taking 56 bits so this is giving you a key space of uh, overall key space of key space of 2 to the power 56 keys overall keys okay and we have understood that in a typical brute force attack which takes few minutes to crack in the current uh, system configurations in addition to the brute force there are other attacks that are possible which anyway we are not going to deal one is called linear crypt analysis and differential crypt analysis they are typically known plain text attacks okay so basically they are known plain text attacks where in which attackers attackers gather the information and write the approximate linear equations and perform the key derivation which is called linear crypt analysis the other one is understand the difference between the plain text and corresponding cipher text blocks how many bits that are differ so based on that there is a differential crypt analysis so the point is that the designers wanted to design the um, ciphers that can actually break or that can withstand the linear crypt analysis or differential crypt analysis so before we proceed to further ciphers <coughs> we need to understand number one des is a block cipher or a stream cipher it's a block cipher right so basically it is a block cipher the way this particular block cipher getting operated is called block cipher modes of operation there are multiple block cipher modes of operations which we call them as number one electronic code book mode called ecb mode then cipher blockchaining mode called cbc mode then cipher feedback mode called CFB mode then output feedback mode called OFB mode then counter mode right these are the various <coughs> modes of operations right we are not talking about the way the encryption is happening we are talking about how the blocks are getting processed so let us look at each one of them in a typical electronic code book mode is the one what actually we saw in the des if you notice in des what we did we took the plain text we took the plain text and divided it into multiple blocks right so block 1 block 2 so on multiple blocks then what we did we pick a key and it is encrypted the plain text is encrypted with the help of the key producing the cipher text of the particular plain text block right so this is your cipher text block of corresponding plain text block this is how we are getting cipher text blocks which are actually independent to each other right so how do you do the decryption again you take the cipher text block apply the key get back your plain text right so this is called a typical electronic code book mode where in which your cipher text blocks that are produced is independent of each other okay one cipher text block is not influencing or 
affecting the other cipher text block. This is called electronic code book mode. Then you have the second mode of operation called cipher block chaining mode, where in which you take the plain text blocks, right? P1, so on, Pn, n blocks are there. Then what we do is we take the encryption with the key for the first block, then the cipher block, the cipher block of this particular plain text block. So, this is your plain text block and the cipher block that is produced for this particular key. This particular cipher text is again given as input for processing the second plain text block. So, that is the reason we call it as this is the cipher going as input for the processing of the second block. This is called a chaining approach. So, it means your first block cipher is influencing the second block, right. So, the first block output is influencing the second block. Right. Similarly, the second one is influencing the third, it is called block chaining approach. Now, if you notice for the second block, what is the input to the second block encryption process? Number one, the second block itself. Number two, key. What is that? Number three, the previous block output, which is the cipher of the previous block. Both go as input for processing the, the second block. So, during the encryption process of second block, your second block of plain text, the key and the previous block cipher, all three are going as an input. Now, the question is for the remaining blocks also it goes the same way, but what about the first block? Is it that the first block receives only two inputs, which are the plain text block and key? Now, in order to generalize the operation, we give three inputs to the first block also. So, first block takes the plain text block, the key, what is the third input? The third input is you have, have input called initial vector called IV, okay. It is called initial vector. What is the size of the initial vector? It is equal to the size of the plain text block. So, which is equal to size of the plain text block. And hence what we do, we will be able to perform bitwise XR operation, right. So, take the plain text block, perform the bitwise XR operation with the initial vector, submit it to the encryption algorithm along with the key producing the first cipher text block which is going as the input to the second cipher text block and the process goes on. This is called cipher block chaining approach. Now, one advantage is that you know, uh, you know your cipher blocks are not purely based on your plain text block because they are also based on the previous block operations, okay. In that way, a little more randomness is coming in. That is one approach, one positive dimension. But the negative dimension is that if you compare that with the EBC, ECB mode, ECB mode can actually go in parallel, the operations. The reason is every block can go in a parallel mode. Whereas, CBC cannot go because once if you complete one block only, the other block can get operated, right. And hence, you have this particular bottleneck. But the advantage is that it gives little more security than the ECB mode, right. Then, other than these two modes of operations, there are three modes of operations. What are they called? They are called cipher feedback mode output feedback mode and counter mode. The advantage of these operations is that though we are operating with the block cipher, what is the size of the block? In the case of DES, it is 64 bit block. Uh, we, we will discuss about AES, which is 128 bit block, right. So, the plain text blocks are 64 bit in the case of DES, 128 in the case of AES. The rest of the three modes of operations, what they are having the feature is that they are able to convert the block cipher into a stream cipher. They are able to convert the block cipher into a stream cipher. What is that they do? Let us see. 
the cipher feedback mode is the third mode of operation which actually uh, makes the block into a kind of a stream which is operation wise it looks like your CBC mode like cipher block chaining mode right. But if you notice what happen is you have the plain text block you have the plain text block but while processing we take a stream of bits the stream of bit is called s okay though i am not sure if you are able to see this clearly this is called s bits typically this s would be eight number of bits so from the plain text we take eight bits then what we do is we take a iv which is called initial vector initial vector is of length b block block size of b okay whatever is your block size that is your length of your initial vector then what we do that initial vector only gets encrypted you understand the difference here so far the encryption process is actually happening on the plain text in this case the encryption process is happening on the initial vector for the first step so when you encrypt the b b bit initial vector you get the b bit output that b bit output we take and divide it into two halves s bits and s uh, b minus s bits so we take this s bits discard this b minus s bits and those s bits gets xr with the plain text s bits that produces cipher bits for that corresponding s bits now this is the the cipher bits goes as input for the next right but while going it we go we are going to have a shift register which is going to make this s bits to the b bits and then again take this take this key and encrypt that b bits and again process continues discard b minus s bits take the s bits and for the for the second set of s bits perform xr and goes on so if you notice this particular operation the cipher is going as input for the next block okay so it's called cipher feedback mode it is going as a feedback okay so and the process continues for the rest of the set of bits now if you notice the earlier diagrams you know uh, whether it is the cbc mode decryption process or ecb mode the decryption process if you notice it is a typical decryption but when it comes to the cipher feedback mode you see the decryption process what is given is encrypt why it is given as encrypt though we actually do the decryption process number 1 you guys remember that what we are performing in the case of triple des right triple des what we do actually there encrypt decrypt and encrypt though we are actually doing decryption but what is that we are giving input a different key when we give a different key though we give perform the decryption operation we are actually doing encryption in the similar lines if you notice we are actually aiming at doing encryption but actually we are doing decryption okay uh, look at the reason see the way your the c1 has come out what is c1 c1 is the s bits which are the cipher bits for the p1 bits which are s number of bits now if you notice how the c1 has come c1 this s bits this s bits have come from p1 of s bits right so you see here c1 has come from the p1 bits and then the most significant s bits because you are taking here most significant bits discarding rest of the b minus s bits so the b most significant bits of encryption over initial vector with k that's what actually we did right 
So this is the C1. Now, what is that we want during the decryption process? What is that we need? We need P1. That is what is decryption, right? During decryption, what is needed? We need P1. So how do you get P1? P1 is equal to C1 XR MSB most significant bits of S over E of K comma IV, right? So that is the reason why this is called encryption. Now this gives you a hint about the other day I asked you a question. What was the question? Actually, during the decryption process, we are not actually inverting them. We are using as it is because it is a overall function. The say, see the way it is actually given here in a similar manner. Okay, You are actually doing encryption but actually getting the decryption, the plain text block. Okay, So that is the beauty of this uh, CFB mode and not only this, other blocks, other modes of operations also follows this. If you notice in the book or in anywhere, the diagrams for uh, the CFB, OFB counter modes, the decryption is actually, you are, it, it indicates is an encryption. Why it is indicated as an encryption is this is the reason, right. Next, output feedback mode. What is the output feedback mode is doing? It is also similar to your CFB mode, but sends encrypted output as the feedback. What is that in the previous case of, uh, uh, you know, the um, CFB, it is actually cipher going, but here the encrypted piece is going, right. So for that purpose, what we do is, it is not the initial vector, now we call it as the random cryptographic number called nonce. That nonce would get encrypted with the help of key, whatever that encrypted output goes as input for the next block. So that is the reason why we call it as encrypted output is going as the feedback and the rest it is as it is. You take the plain text block, XR that with the output of the encrypted uh, uh, block and then get your cipher text, right. Now you see the decryption process. As I said, the decryption process is actually the same like how we discussed about the uh, you know the cipher feedback mode. So the last mode is called counter mode. The counter mode is actually kind of uh, independent kind of an operation in the form of your ECBB mode. But the input is not initial vector, input is not a nonce. Here for every block you are actually giving the counter, okay counter 1, counter 2, so on, for the n number of blocks, you are actually giving n number of counters. Each counter would be deferred by 1, okay, or you can call them as incremented by 1. So take the counter, encrypt them with the key, that goes as an input to the plain text and produces the cipher text. Now is there any kind of a dependency between the cipher text blocks? Certainly not, because you know, every block is independently processed and hence can be paralyzed in the form of a ECB mode. Now, the beauty of this mode is that when compared with the ECB mode, here since, you know, you are actually taking, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, counters that gives more randomness, okay. So, for the play, in order to, what actually our objective is, we wanted to nullify the dependencies or relationship between P1 and C1 or P2 and C2. Now, from where the randomness is coming, the randomness is coming from the counters, right. <clears throat> so these are the various modes of operations using which, uh, you know, the all the ciphers, whether it is the uh, uh, DES, AES are, uh, you know, working. Okay. So next, we will proceed with advanced encryption standard called AES. Now, initialization vector IV, if you notice, 
in the case of uh, cipher feedback mode you give only once right now the counters as i said they get incremented okay you give once for the next block you are incrementing this particular the first block counter okay why we went for initialization vector the reason is that if you notice in the case of uh, cbcb mode you are actually giving three inputs number one plain text block the key and the cipher coming from the previous right in the case of initial block you don't have the previous block cipher so for that purpose in order to make it a generalized logic what we did we have added the the b bit initialization vector now in this case these are all the counters counters actually if you notice these vary for block to block okay and typically once you generate the counter subsequent counters are incremented by 1 okay and these counters get encrypted with the key and that goes to the plain text block and gets xr the plain text block gets xr okay so the core objective is uh, simple in the sense that we wanted to ensure that you are this plain text and the cipher text dependencies or the relations you know gets random okay so that the performing the cryptanalytic attacks in the form of known plain text and cipher text or uh, differential cryptanalysis gets uh, minimized next we have advanced encryption standard which is currently in place as I said, DES was in place commercially for the, till early 90s and subsequently it got uh, replaced with multiple DES say in the form of double DES and what, by the way what was the attack that uh, double DES has? We have noticed the meet in middle attack that double DES has brought in and hence people went for trip, uh, triple DES and subsequently uh, you know AES has replaced it. You know, a quick comparison of DES and AES. If you notice, uh, AES has come late 90s and got uh, into commercial early 2000s. The plain text block is 64 bit in the case of DES, and in the case of AES, it is 128 bit. Okay, but that's not a big uh, advantage in the that's not a big uh, you know point of discussion. But the beauty of AES is that comparing with DES you are having variable length key right in the case of DES your key size is fixed you take 64 and ideally while implementation you go for 56 in the case of AES key size is variable it can be 128 it can be 192 it can be 256 you decide the key size that what you want and typically the encryption operations substitution and permutations same kind of a thing that happens and hence you will be able to achieve both confusion and diffusion as in the case of uh, DES right and uh, you know AES was introduced by uh, two Dutch cryptographers now the point is in the case of DES your number of rounds is fixed which is 16 but in the case of AES the number of rounds varies based on the key size. Imagine if your key size is 128 bit, then you have to go for 10 rounds of operation. In the case of 192 bit, you go for 12 rounds of operation. In the case of 256 bit key, you have to go for 14 rounds of operations, right. So you just have a quick look at this uh, binary representation of the numbers and its corresponding hexadecimals and also a typical, you know, common units of, uh, you know, the uh, storage in terms of you call bit is uh, number of bits 1, uh, if it is 4 bits you call it as a nibble, 8 bit you call it as a byte, 16 bit is the word and 32 bit is the double word. Actually in AES we use all these notations. We also use, if you look at the DES, we just deal with only bit, 64 bit, 56 bit, that is all. In the case of AES you use number 1 bit, number 2 byte, number 3 a 32 bit word okay actually it is a double word in the sense but we call we use the notation 32 bit word okay so you need not get confused or uh, you know uh, um, this one so just to give you a quick understanding 
Imagine if you are having a 128 bit key, you think of possible number of keys that it can produce. You know, I am not sure how do you read this number. These are the possible number of keys that a 2 power 128 bit key pr that produces. Imagine if it is 2 to the power 256, these many number of keys that are possible in the case of AES, right. <coughs> Remember, is it AES is a symmetric or asymmetric? It is symmetric cipher, okay. Morning and even the other day, people were discussing about quantum, if quantum comes, cryptography and all that. Remember, if quantum comes, the threat is for, threat is for, not for symmetric. Threat is for, not for symmetric, but threat is for asymmetric. If quantum comes, threat is for asymmetric, not for symmetric. If it is for symmetric, you can increase the key space and threat is there for asymmetric algorithms that anyway we will be discussing in uh, next sessions. So now we are talking about symmetric, okay. So now what is the AES, how it operates? This is the overall picture of AES. If you notice the AES takes, it is a basically a block cipher and what is the block size? We said 128 bit block. 128 bit block. So, I can call that as 16 bytes, right. So, we said key can be of 128 bit, 192 bit or 256 bit. So, in terms of bytes 16, 24, 32 bytes key size and according to the key size you call the AES as a 128 or 192 or 256. Now, so this is the overall picture of AES. If you notice what is the plain text? It is 128 bit. How this 128 bit plain text is arranged? In the form of a state array. What is the state array? This is the state array, where in which the state array is having 16 cells, each cell is occupying one byte. Each cell is occupying one byte. So, you actually code the data in the form of state array or state matrix, state array or state matrix. So, when you say state array, it is of 16 cells, state matrix is also of 16 cells, okay. So, you can see this is a state matrix, right. And there are Typically, uh, as we said, how many number of rounds are there? The number of rounds are designated based on the key size that what you are having. So, you see here, imagine we are having 128 bit, uh, 128 bit key, you have 10 rounds, right? You have 10 rounds, round 1, round 2, so on, okay? There are 10 rounds. Every by the end of every round, what happens is your state matrix gets updated. For every round of operation, your state matrix get updated. Now, what happens in each round? Each round, there are about four transformations that happens in each round, right? So, there are 10 rounds. Each round has four operations except that the last but round there are only three, three operations, okay. Except that last one there are only uh, uh, in which there are only three operations, the rest of the rounds we have four operations. Similarly, this is on one side of the plain text. What is that other side? Key, okay. What is the size of key we said? 128 bit, 192 bit or 256 bit, right. Now, do we have a key scheduling algorithm for DES? Why we have a key scheduling algorithm? To generate, to generate ASAM, as simple as that, in AES also you have a key scheduling algorithm or we call it as key expanding algorithm, okay. Why do we need that? Because you have multiple rounds of operations, right. So, on one side you have plain text and on the other side you have the key. 
So what happens in the each round? This is what happens. You take this state array. This is your state array. What is the size of the state array? 16 cells, 16 cells, right? Now, we said how many, in case if it is 128 bit, how many rounds you have? 10. In each round, we said how many operations? 4 except that last. What are the operation? These are the operation. Number 1, substitution of weights. Number 2, shifting of rows. Number 3, mixing of columns. Number 4, add round key. These are the four operations. Substitution of bytes, shifting of rows, mixing of the columns, add round key. Right? Whenever you complete a operation, your state array gets updated. So, updated state array. This is your updated state array. So, one round you complete, you get updated state matrix, again next round, again next round and again next round, right. So the same whatever we discussed, substitution of bytes, shifting of rows, mixing of the columns, add round key. The last round do not have one operation which is called mix columns. So totally only three operations. What are they? Substitution of bytes, shifting of rows, add round key. So, what is the last operation? What is the last round of encryption process is add round key. And remember, actually the rounds starts with add round key. Okay, that means the initial operation for the encryption is add round key. The last operation for the encryption is add round key. And hence the decryption also the reverse process. Okay. That is what? There is an initial single transformation called add round key, right? And now the question is, AES is not a fistal structure. What is a fistal structure? Take the block, divide into two halves, keep one half as it is, perform the operations on the one, one block, right? It is not a fistal structure, right? And whatever the key that is provided as input is expanded through which algorithm? Key scheduling algorithm. Using key scheduling algorithm, it is get expanded to 44 32 bit words. What is the size of key? We said 128 bit, right? So, your 128 bit key, how many bytes it is? Actually 16 bytes, okay. How many words? Th these are all 4 32 bit words. These are 4 32 bit words. During your key expansion, what happens? This 4 32 bit words gets expanded to 40 more words. Forty more words. So that means in a typical AES of 10, uh, uh, you know the 128 bit key, how many number of keys that including the given key that you get is, you know, uh, in terms of number of words, there are 44 words. The initially given four words key that gets expanded to 40 more words. In terms of bit, given 128 bit gets expanded to 1408 bits because every round you need, every round you need one word. Next. So, this is how you proceed. Right. You take the plain text, put it in the form of the state array. Okay. So input is how many bits? 128 bits. How it is arranged? 
16 bytes. So, byte 1, byte 2, so on, 16 bytes. Right? When you put it in the form of the state matrix, how do you read these bytes? You read these bytes in the form of column. So, that means B0, B1, B2, B3. You will not go in the row wise, you have to put it in the column fashion. So, B0 to B3 and then subsequently B4 to B7 like this. This is how your matrix comes from the state array. Okay, this is how it goes. So, imagine you are having the plain text. This operation is not there in the case of DES. What happens in the case of plain text? You take the text, put it in the form of the hexadecimal notation and that corresponding hexadecimal notations goes into the form of the state array and as well as state matrix. Okay. So, plain text ASCII to the hex, hex to the state array and as well as the state matrix. Now, what are the four operations we said? Substitution of the bytes, shifting of rows, mixing of columns, add round key. In order to do substitution of bytes, what you need? What would you need? S box. Shifting of rows, what is that operation? Permutation. So, what do you need? You need the permutation order, order of permutation you need. Next operation is the mix columns. Mix columns is a typical matrix multiplication operation. How do you multiply? You take the state matrix, whatever you got after shifting of rows, multiply that with a constant matrix. This matrix multiplication matrix is constant. Okay. A constant matrix. And once that you get, what is the output you get is add round key that goes to the add round key. And for that purpose, the round key comes from key scheduling algorithm. Okay. This is the overall operation. Now, what is the first operation is substitution of bytes. So, the first operation in the round is substitution of bytes. In order to do that, you need an S box you need an S box. So, what you do? You take the you take the byte that is there in the state of matrix. Look at this S box. What is the value that that S box indicates that gets substituted in this state array uh, cell or state say, array byte? This is the S box and the S box is fixed. S box is fixed. What is the size of S box? It is 16 cross 16 matrix and hence how many values would be there in the S box? 256 values. Number 1, this number 256 has some importance. How do we I, how do I put this 256? I can put this 256, these are all actually 256 8-bit values, okay. 256 8-bit values, that means you know they are all represented in the form of hexadecimal notation, okay. And this 256 I can represent in the form of 2 power 8 right i can represent this 256 as 2 power 8 that means i can call this as in the form of 
a prime number to the power n p power n a set of values which are represented in the form of p power n satisfying some mathematical operations they are called as a field and a field of operations in the representation p power n is called Galois field that we will discuss little later but now you just understand that or remember that 256 values are there these 256 values are 8 bit values which are in their hexadecimal notation and this 256 number I am thinking in the form of a prime number to the power n in the form of p power 8 or 2 power 8. So, this is my S box. So, each individual state what we do? Say so take an example, my state matrix has you know E A. Look at your state uh, you know S box E as well as A. What is the value to be substituted? 8, 7. So, what is the new value that comes? 8, 7. So, what you do? You take the byte, the first 4 bits represent row, the second 4 bits represent the column of the S box, pick the value corresponding value from the S box and substitute that value and you get the new state, this is your new state matrix. That is typical S box operation. And since you are doing an S box and you have the inverse S box also, when the inverse S box would be used? During decryption. Next, what is the next operation? Shifting of rows. So, now my state matrix after substitution of bytes. This is my state matrix after my substitution of bytes. What I am doing? Shift rows. In this new state matrix or the state matrix that what I have got after substitution of bytes, shifting of rows happens in this way my first row goes unaltered, my first row goes unaltered, my second row goes one byte left circular shift, one byte left circular shift. So, S10 here, right? This is my first row, second row. First row is unaltered. Third row is two byte left circular shift. Two byte left circular shift. Right. And this way, like this. And fourth row, three byte left circular shift. So, what we did was to perform, to perform row shift operations in a circular manner. So, you have shift rows transformation. This is the second operation, right. Next, important operation in AES is the mixed columns operation. Mixed columns operation in which it is a column by column individual operation. So, each byte of the column is mapped to a new value because it is a typical matrix multiplication. For that purpose, this is a, a constant matrix. If you look at the constant matrix, 
there are only three values to that. What are the three values in that? 0, 1, 0, 2 and 0, 3. The constant matrix has actually three values 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And remember, we are to all talking in terms of hexadecimal representations, not 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 1. Okay. So, how the multiplication, matrix multiplication happens? The typical matrix multiplication, right? So, the first row and as well as the column produces this cell, right? In the same way it goes. But now, now most important thing now here is that what are the operations when you do matrix multiplication when you are doing? What are the operations? Arithmetic operation, number 1 you do addition, number 2, these are the two operations right. When you do matrix multiplication, 0, 2 into this plus 0, 3 into this. So, typical, typical addition and multiplication. Now, when you are performing bitwise operations, addition is nothing but, addition is nothing but typical XR operation. It is a, it is a, it is a fairly straightforward operation. Now, most important operation is the multiplication operation. Now, we will directly go, we will directly go how multiplication operation happens, then we will see why it happens. Now, I want to perform, I need to perform multiplication operation, right. This is the multiplication operation. See, what are the values that we have in the constant matrix? Huh? 0, 1, 0, 2 and 0, 3, right. Now, imagine I am multiplying, I am multiplying some value with 2, 2 into some value, okay, 2 into some value what I should do. In such case, what is that other value which is element in the state array, right? Element in the state array. How many bits are there to that element? How many bits? 8 bits, right? 8 bits. I am calling that 8 bits as B0, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, right? Okay, better I will take the note, then we will proceed. So, if you notice, the constant matrix has three values, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 1, right? Now, I am multiplying 0, 2 with with one state array value. What is that array value? It is your 8 bit value. I am calling that 8 bit value as like this B0, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6 and B7. These are the bits. Now imagine what is that first one? Uh, this is 87, right? 87. For 87, what would be my these values? What is 8? How do I represent in the form of the binary representation? 1, 0, 0, 0, and 7. Sorry. right. So, what I do? I take the state array values, put them in the form of the binary bits, 
right and I noted them as the bit positions B0 to B7. Now that I am multiplying with 0 to what is the logic says? Logic says this produces if B7 is 0 what it produce? It produces this okay. What it produce? If B7 is equal to 0 then what it produce is this. So it produces B6, B5, B4, B3, B2, B1 and 0. That means what? It is not a circular shift rather the bits are moved to the left but for the last rightmost one you added a 0. When this comes if my B7 is 0. If B7 is 1 what happens? If B7 is 1 what happens? Whatever the shifted values this B6, B5, B4, B3, B2, B1 and 0 this gets XOR with a constant what is that constant 0 0 0 double 1 0 double 1 right. This logic holds when you are multiplying the state array value with the 2. What are the other elements we have? Multiplication values to multiply 3 and 1 right. So what we do is in case if I am multiplying with 3 some x what I write is 0 2 into x plus 0 1 into x okay. That means this is typically 1 into x right. So I have the logic to perform my multiplication with 0 2. So what I did 0 3, 0 2 plus 0 1, 1 into that x is always x, so no problem, right. So this is the logic, now so imagine, okay this is what it is written. Now imagine I am multiplying my state matrix with the constant matrix given like this. Right. So, how do you go? So, 0, 2, 8, 7 plus 0, 3, 6, E plus 0, 1, 4, 6, 0, 1, A, 6. That produces what? That produces the new state matrix first element. What is that? 4, 7. So, how do you write that? So, 0, 2, 8, 7 XR, 0, 3, 6 E XR, 0, 1, 0, 1, 4, 6 XR, 0, 1, A, 6, right. So now what you need to do for this to calculate 8, 7 that is what I have shown you here, right. Similarly, 6e, how do you write that? You should write 0, 3, 6e as, how do you write? 0, 2, 6e, xr, 1 into 6e, which is nothing but 6e. 0, 2, 6e, follow the logic, okay follow this logic. Now when you do that you get the values. So the 4, 7 comes because of these operations. So this is how the big columns operation works. So it is not a straightforward multiplication operation. Why? The reason is these arithmetic operations whatever we said. right. So arithmetic operations 
of AEs. What are the arithmetic operations? These are all addition, multiplication are happening, happening where? On a field of numbers. On happening on a field of numbers. What do you mean by field? A field is nothing but a set satisfying certain operations. So, all of you know there is a set, there is a group, abelian group, then you have rings, then commutative rings, then field. So, a field is a set of numbers in which satisfying uh, properties such as closure, associativity, additivity, then commutativity in terms of addition and as well as multiplication and also the inverse, right? And also those inverse and multiplicative identity. If all those properties, if the set of numbers satisfy, they call that as the field. Now, what is this field that AES is operating? If you notice, there is an S box, right? What is this S box? What is that S box? It is 16 cross 16 set of values, which are that 256 values. These values are carefully chosen in a way that they form field they form the field. The 256 values that are carefully chosen in the designing of that S box forms the field. What do you mean by field? We said satisfying certain properties of mathematics on addition as well as multiplication and also having the inverses, right? Now, what is that, what is, what type of the field it is? There are two types of fields you have. One is called finite field with the p elements. There is the finite field with the p power n elements. Actually speaking, there are infinite uh, fields with infinite numbers and finite fields. We deal with finite fields and finite fields are of the notation p power n where p is the prime number. where p is the prime number, right? Now, this 256, how do we represent it? We said we are representing that in the form of 2 to the power 8, right? Where this 2 is your prime number and hence 2 to the power n and hence this particular field of numbers on which AES is operating, they are Galois field. are Galois field of numbers. Now, performing arithmetic operations on the Galois field of numbers needs these operations, what we discussed, okay. So, I will not go much into the details of that, but this, this is the background. Why we are doing the typical matrix multiplication in that way? Now, if still you want to know more, what was that logic on which this particular, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, uh, this particular uh, things have come that you can just look at the, uh, you know, the uh, William Stallings book, okay. So, but now we understood the mixed columns operation. I just briefly touched on what is the reason why we are going for this uh, multiplication in this way rather than a typical multiplication operation, right. Next. So, what is the next operation we have? Add round key. So, the add round key is typical XR operation, okay, a typical XR operation that comes from the round scheduling algorithm, right, from the round scheduling algorithm. So, what is the initial 
key that we give 128 bit key. That 128 bit key is arranged in the form of your key matrix and that goes as the input, right. So now we discussed what happens in the text side. What happens on the text side we have completed. What happens next is the key side, right. You need to perform a key scheduling algorithm so that you expand the given key. What is the given key you have given? 128 bit key, right. This 128 bit key is nothing but your 16 bytes are 4 32 bit words, okay. What is the first operation we do in AES? Substitution of bytes. First operation when you put the matrix, when you take the given input into the form of a state matrix, the first operation is add round key. So that means whatever the input that what we give in the form of key is sufficient for initial round. After initial round, how many rounds are there? 10 rounds, 10 rounds. So in the case of 128. So you need for every round, how many uh, words of key? Four words of key, four words of key, right? So that's the reason why you need 40 more words. Totally 44 words. This four given scheduling and are expanding 40 more provides you totally of 44 words, right? Now, how do I expand? How do I get? So, now tell me the 128 bit key, right? How many bytes? So, all these 16 bytes are represented in the form of the key matrix. How do they are represented? So, K naught to K 15. So, how they are represented in the form of matrix? Column wise, right? I have given my initial key. Now, you see here, these four bytes constitute or I call that as one word. These four bytes I call it as a second word. These four bytes third word, these four bytes fourth word. Four words, right. Now, what needs to be done is, You see here, first four words are coming from given key W0, W1, W2, W3. Now, I need to produce how many more words? 40 more words. That means I need to produce from W4 to W13, uh, W43. Because totally 44, okay. So that's what. Now, how do I produce? Now, W0 to W3, fair enough. Now, I need to produce W4, W5, W6, W7. Now, see how W5 is coming. W5 is coming from my W1 XR with W4, that is how W5 is coming. How W6 is coming? W2 XR with W5. How W7 is coming? W3 XR that with W6. That means in the four words that I am producing, how three words have come? Three words have come from the pre immediate previous one and the and the word that is and the word that is four words before that four words before that what does that mean w5 has come from 
previous word W4 and four words before that. What is that? W1. Similarly, W6 has come from W2 and W5, W7 has come from W3. Now, but one word, what is that word? W4. How W4 has come? W4 has come from W0. That means the four words before that. And is it come from directly from that previous pre its predecessor, which is W3? No. The W3 has undergone an operation called G. W3 has undergone an operation called G. That means every fourth word is undergoing an operation. Output of that is going as an input along with that four words before that is producing my new word. Okay. What is that G? The G contains certain operations. Number one, rotate word, substitute word and then the result undergoes a typical XR operation with a round constant. These are the operations that happens in the G function G. So, rotate word so, this is my word right W3, word contains what? 4 bytes, byte 1, byte 2, byte 3, byte 4, they get swapped to different positions, see one byte goes here, this byte goes here and then this byte comes here and this byte goes here, it is a rotation of words, rotation to the left, right. And then what is the next operation? Substitution of the operation. So, for this what is needed? S box. Take the S box, perform the operation. Next, what is the third step? The result would undergo a typical XR with a round constant. What is that round constant? Do you remember? Uh, in the case of DES also, there is one operation that we are performing based on the round. What was that? Circular shift operation, number of bits depending on the round you are in which. Similarly, there is a round constant here. If you are in round 1, the constant is 0, 1. If you are in round 2, constant is 0, 2 and so on. Okay. So, those constants gets XR with the, the output from the substitution of the word that produces your new word that produces a new word which gets XR with the word that is four words to that to give you your new word. Okay. Are you able to follow? So, this happens for every third word. So, this is how AES works in terms of number 1 key, key side, number 2 on the plain text side. Okay. So, there is a typical example given in the, I think this is from the Forozon, where in which you have uh, a 128 bit key and which in terms of after performing multiple rounds, the 44 words that it produces. Okay. So, initially you perform, this is the overall operation, key expansion, then add round key, then four steps. Remember, the last round would contain only three operations. What are they? Substitution of by, shifting of rows, add round key and what is missing? In the last round, so this is how AES proceeds, right. So to just to summarize what we discussed today is number one block cipher modes of operation. 
and then the symmetric cipher which is AES, right. So, before we conclude, I just give you the thought about, so these are all the ciphers we discussed number 1 DES and AES, okay. Next week in the next session on cryptography, we deal with asymmetric. Now, when we are dealing with asymmetric, what is happening? First of all, in the case of symmetric, what is happening? C is equal to E of P comma K, P is equal to D of C comma K. What is the challenge in this case? sharing of key, okay. Now imagine this is Alice and this is Bob. In the case of asymmetric, in the case of asymmetric, remember every node will have, every node will have a pair of keys call them as you need pair of keys you need pair of keys alice has a pair of keys bob has the pair of keys in this pair, one key is public, another one is private. Similarly, this is public, this is private. That means PUA comma PR PUB is known to PUA public key of Alice, PUB public key of Bob is known to everyone. PRA is known to is known to Alice. PRB is known to only because they are private. This is public, known to everybody, private, known only to them. Now, how encryption happens is this way. Now, imagine Alice is sending a message to Bob. What she do? She creates the cipher text by performing encryption over the plain text with the help of public key of Bob. She performs the encryption with the help of public key of Bob because Alice knows the public key of Bob decrypts the cipher text with the help of private key of Bob. Remember, the decryption is done by Bob with his private key. Now, that means, that means what? What is that observation? Number one, encryption has happened by sender with with receiver's public key decryption 
has happened by with receivers can anybody decrypt that can anybody decrypt it other than the receiver can anybody else like eve can decrypt the c no one can decrypt c because because what to decrypt what is needed private key if private key if i if the bob tells to everybody or bob tells to somebody those can decrypt that is the reason why don't share your the keys which keys they are the private keys right so because and since the encryption is happened with the public key it is also called public key encryption okay so with this we will uh, pause here in the next session we will continue our interaction on asymmetric key encrypt uh, algorithms and we will pick some algorithms and we will discuss and remember what is the uh, what are the algorithms that are prone to threats for the quantum is asymmetric asymmetric now, now the point is with the asymmetric what is the challenge we are able to address in symmetric sharing of key has come is there is any sharing of key here so no sharing of key is required that is the beauty of asymmetric okay no sharing of key you may think that sir public key of uh, bob is known to alice that is known not that it is shared again the question of sharing is about about overhead of securely sharing it there is no need to securely share the public key right it's a public after all right so with that we will conclude for today thank you